just going to share with you some straightforward experiments that use this idea of refraction. So when light is traveling through a different medium, it takes a different direction if there is a different refractive index. So this simple experiment, my cup, has got two coins in it and I'm just placing it so you just can only see one of the coins. Okay, and I'm just going to add water to this cup. As I add the water, the light starts taking a slightly different direction. And you can see that that second coin starts to become visible. And that's because water has a different refractive index to the air. The light is taking a different route uh, through the water and it's able to reach the camera. Now we're going to do another simple experiment. This jar contains vegetable oil. Vegetable oil and Pyrex, for example, a Pyrex test tube, have the same refractive index. However, this, refract this test tube is full of air. So if I put that test tube in the uh, Pyrex test, in the vegetable oil, it will um, be very visible. So now what I'm going to do is add vegetable oil inside the um, test tube. Let's see what happens. I can't control it very well, but you can see that apart from the air bubbles, we've now got an invisible uh, test tube. And the reason the test tube is invisible is that the light doesn't change direction as it's passing through. I can do the same experiment with baby oil, although I can't actually find, oh, let's see. Here's my cup. And I've actually, I've got a test tube in there, which has got baby oil in. So baby oil and Pyrex and vegetable oil all have the same refractive index and they're basically invisible um, if you place one inside the other. Um, this is used by forensic scientists when they are trying to um, compare the uh, glass manufactured by different um, car manufacturers after an accident or after burglary or after, you know, is, is, is something seen of crime. I've also got a glass rod, um, I think, maybe this isn't a Pyrex rod, I think this is glass rather than Pyrex actually, but certainly if you choose a correct rod, you can uh, show that this is invisible in some different liquids as well. It's just quite nice to have that um, information. And um, so another idea using the idea of refraction Uh, hopefully that's the right way around. My uh, recording doesn't always show it. I've got these beads and these beads are almost entirely made of water. Um, I bought them from uh, florists. So um, if you're looking for something called florist beads and then you soak them in water, they're tiny, tiny granules. They look like grains of sand until you uh, soak them in water and uh, they, they are practically all water. Now, what you can tell is that um, there's movement between um, the air and the um, beads, so the light's changing direction, so it's really, really hard for us to read what it says under these glass beads until I add water. And when the water fills all of those gaps, so I've got my glass beads which have the same refractive index as the water, so what I've got is basically um, an un disturbed uh, path for the light to take as it travels from the um, words through that liquid and those gels because we've got the same refractive index. So they're in there, uh, but they're just invisible. Um, quite often I put these in a beaker, put a penny at the bottom of the beaker and then hand it around the class and ask the students to take the penny out and you can see their faces once they've realized there's something else in there. And uh, my last experiment is one with a slightly more unusual uh, crystal. This is calcite. It's quite straightforward to get hold of if you want to. Calcite is quite an unusual crystal. Calcite has two refractive indices. So the light leaving that word refraction has got two different paths that it will take through the calcite crystal. And that's why you can see that word written twice. 